there's been some activities around it in Europe, but most of it has been happening here with our pool fund project. Uh, thank you, Irv, wherever you are. Irv, you in here? I want to thank you. There you are. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Letting you bother, for letting us bother you and your job and all your people. They've been very cooperative with us. I know they did ask a lot of questions and that, and we responded, but this is one thing I wanted to talk for those that were not around us this week. Um, we know what we're going to say. Well, for the most part. But that's very important. And here's kind of a general statement. Conventional compaction equipment and procedures have shortcomings and too often produce poor results. I don't know if you all agree with, with that or not, but in my experience in the states I've worked in, we get an awful lot of, of times when we don't get the proper compactive effort on our roadways and we don't get the air voids and the density requirements that we need out there. So let's talk a little bit, well, and then, so intelligent compaction technology addresses a lot of those shortcomings and gives us, appears to give us a, a better way to compact our pavements. What are the shortcomings of conventional compaction? Let's talk about that. First of all, over here, right here. Oh, that pointer doesn't work. <laughs> so let's be over here. Limited on-the-fly feedback. Who in here has been really frustrated with a roller operator? You just think, you know what? <laughs> Got a few hands back there. You know what? All I want to do, I want this guy to put four passes on this pavement. It's he just you can't get it done for whatever reason. Either won't or can't can't do it. And uh, but you know, when, in doing this research, I kind of been up there on the rollers with a lot of the roller operators. They got a tough job, don't they? And the the reason that's tough is they're blind. They're blind up there. They 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 can't. Nothing is telling them there's no feedback. The roller's not talking. Layer that fill all the way out. Yep. If we turn on what we call to terrain mapping, so every time the operator makes a pass, uh, we can either set it to it actually records each pass individually, or it will overwrite each pass depending on what we're doing. On an excavator system, it's, it's easy to explain on an excavator. So if, if we're digging underwater, right? GPS is a really handy tool for that. If we have marsh excavation, we have to get to a specific design elevation that's below water. It's difficult not only to see, but to make sure that you actually got all the, uh, the material removed, right? So on the excavator, not only will the guy in the screen or the operator see a heads up display that'll tell him. We didn't have anything to work with on a project, but using the WISCORS network, we were able to say, okay, how do you want to uh, run the files and was kind of a seamless entry into that thing. So, so just another <clears throat> another technology that we have as far as the, the whole the whole package here.